Welcome, everybody, to the Soul of the Unexplained. I am your host, Jim Kelgard, and joining me, as always, is my super awesome co-host and co-creator of the Soul of the Unexplained, my brother from another mother, Mr. Rogelio, if you happen to habla espanol, Rogelio or Roger Stokes. Roger, how are you doing today, sir? I am doing fabulous, Jim. Thank you for the warm introduction, as always. Super excited here to be talking again about one of our favorite subjects, Skinwalker Ranch. And uh, to you, our viewers, welcome to a great evening of discussion. Wait a minute. We're talking about Skinwalker Ranch. I thought we were talking about tacos. Am I in the wrong podcast again? Jim, Jim, your taco podcast was canceled last week when you decidedly chose hot dogs over tacos and yeah. In, in what universe would I ever choose hot dogs over tacos? That never happened. Now, Whoa. if you're maybe talking I about- Maybe I went through a portal. Maybe I went through a portal. I don't know. If you're talking about the massive write-in campaign from avocado growers and people that like guacamole that got my taco podcast canceled, then okay, may, maybe, maybe- Maybe that's what happened, but irregardless, folks, as Roger said, we digress here, and we do that a lot, don't we? But uh, tonight, we've got a very special episode of The Soul of the Unexplained, where Roger and I are uh, talking with one of our absolute favorite people on planet Earth, and of course, my favorite Denver Broncos fan, Mr. John Nyberger, and we're going to be having a uh, kind of a roundtable discussion of fellow Skinwalker Ranch insiders. We're going to kind of recap the uh, secret of Skinwalker Ranch now that we're at the mid-season point of season five. So, Mr. Nyberger, uh, how are you doing, sir? So good to see you again. You're you're a four-timer now on The Soul of the Unexplained. How about I know. You? This is wild. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me again. Absolutely. And I, I realize you already touched on it, but the... Uh... You know, the way to make you choose a hot dog over a taco is if someone put avocado or you know guacamole on your taco. Well, I think that, you would probably then choose the hot dog, right? Well, yeah. And, and to be fair, I, I do have a known weakness for Nathan's hot dogs being a New Yorker, you know. But mm. when, it come, when it comes to hot dogs, I got to have sauerkraut and mustard on. So they make it a, make it a brat. A yes. brat of sauerkraut and, and mustard in, instead of a hot dog. Oh, heavens, yes. There, yeah, I yeah. love love brats. I love uh, kielbasa. I mean, the whole nine yards, yeah. And, of course, Polish hot dogs. Love them as well. Mm, good thing I ate dinner before we did this <laughs> podcast, folks. <laughs> and, uh, of course, as you can see, John, I left the Raiders cap uh, in my bedroom, and I found the Stetson, so the Stetson is back. And uh, even though I have the, the hat back, my T-shirt, for all of you 80s fans, particularly you New Wave fans, Nice. Men without hats. How about that, right? How rare is that? I'm just to show how totally unhip and uncool I am. Yes, I'm wearing a men without hats t-shirt. And contrary to popular belief, folks, men without hats are not a one-hit wonder. They had two major hits. Well, okay, one major hit and one top 20 hit in the United States. Of course, obviously safety dance, right? Yeah, and, which is already uh, in my head now. Thank you. Right. And the one that I like even better than Safety Dance, of course, Pop Goes the World. <laughs> right? I can't think of how that even goes. Oh, don't do you even guys ask. Think, don't even do you ask think me to if sing. they actually wore hats, uh, they might have had more hits? You know, it's funny. I actually got to see Men Without Hats perform live about uh, four or five years ago. And they were performing in like this festival that also had howard jones and uh, i think berlin so like all these great 80s new wave acts and i was really impressed with how good men without hats were the lead singer you know same lead singer as they had back in the 80s uh ivan is his name phenomenal uh crowd interaction just really uh, very enjoyable i was i was expect my expectations were like down here and just really kind of pleasantly surprised with how good men without hats were and i've you know I've, i'm not ashamed i've been a, i've been a fan of men without hats ever since what 83 84 so so uh so yeah <laughs> again folks i'm totally 
un, uncool and unhip when it comes to to music and obviously i have a weakness for the synthesizer so there you go but we're not here to talk about 80s music folks we are here to talk and we're not here to talk about taco as much as i would like to but uh we are here to talk about the secret of skinwalker ranch and we are now uh at the mid-season point of season five of the history channel's hit docuseries the secret of skinwalker ranch and so what we're doing today, fellas, is we're we're just going to talk about where we're at right now, how far things have progressed since the first episode of season five, our general feeling and attitude of, of how the show is progressing and evolving, and also some of the things that perhaps we're excited to see in the remaining uh, episodes that are going to be coming up for, uh, for the re- remainder of season five. So... Uh, to begin with, um, let's let's kind of just start with where do you guys feel this season so far compares to the feel and the evolution, if you will, of the previous four seasons? Uh, is it better, about the same, or do you feel maybe it's lost a few steps? And John, we'll start with you. I, I think it's actually a step up. Yeah, Last season, I thought was crazy. And, you know, that that was the one, you know, Brandon said it's going to mess some people up, you know, a little more colorfully. You know, he said people are going to need therapy after it. I don't think that was true, although it was pretty wild. But it may be true after this season, because there's been a couple of episodes already, particularly the more recent ones with the lasers. It kind of had me freaked out a little bit, like viscerally, I felt weird after watching that, because it's one thing to see a light in the sky which is crazy enough that shouldn't be there. But, you know, those sorts of things are weird. But we're all used to that level of weirdness. But yeah, the, some of the other stuff is has been pretty nuts. And you know, I, I get the feeling that, I mean, we're only halfway through the season. So, of course, they're building up to crazier stuff later. So if this is, if this is where we are halfway through, I, I may actually need therapy at the end of this. Yeah. I... I'll go there. I, I I completely agree. I think I think that the the general feel of the show, and again, the way it's been progressing, like you say, John, has been a step up. And particularly with some of the episodes, it's been more than a step. It's been like a complete, you know, full bounding leap upward uh, in in pace and tone and all that for me. Roger, how about you? What did what, what say you regarding how things uh, have started off this season. So I think, you know, if you compare the past seasons and the progression that they've made from season one to season two and so forth, that um, season five has taken an astronomical leap ahead of the previous seasons. Um, The things that have happened with the, uh, and spoilers ahead, if you have not watched any of season five yet or all of them, um but you know shooting the rockets having lasers being cut off doing the uh again you know with all the technology they have out there and really discovering that cone there that and those spires and again matching up the anomaly that's there you know they have a donut shape underground they have one at ground level they have one in the sky like these revelations that have happened this this season so far have been it's literally like you jim and you john it's messed a little bit with my reality the things that they're showing and things that they're capturing shouldn't exist with our understanding of modern day physics and science and so yeah like this has been the most exciting season for me and i just can't wait each tuesday to know what's next and watch and yeah and we're only halfway through the season and there's so many more episodes to go and you know being an insider and having some of that uh you know the q a that we talked about and just some of the hints that they've talked about with episodes coming up like i can't even imagine how it can get any crazier than what they've done but i'm looking forward to it well said sir and speaking of the insider program we've got to absolutely have to do our plug for the Skinwalker Ranch Insider Program. Of course, 
Roger and myself and John are all proud members of the Skinwalker Ranch Insider Group. And for those of you that don't know what the Skinwalker Ranch Insiders are, they're this basically essentially the official fan group, if you will, of the uh, of Skinwalker Ranch and the secret of Skinwalker Ranch, and also uh, obviously the amazing scientific investigation and research that goes on at Skinwalker Ranch. And Roger and I have, have been members of the Skinwalker Ranch Insider Group since, uh, Roger, I can't remember, I, I either joined in June or July of 2021. So I've, I've just, uh, I'm right around my, my two year anniversary of, uh, well, or three year maybe. Yeah, about, about three years, isn't it? Yeah, about, about yeah. my three year anniversary. So, and I know you joined right around the same time I did, if not on the same day. So, yep. um, but for me, it truly is one of the best investments I have ever made. And you can sign up for, there's two different levels of membership. There is a monthly subscription that you can uh, join. It's $10 a month. And there's also a yearly subscription that you can sign up for that I believe is $99. So you end up saving a bit by overall by, by joining the yearly subscription option. And of course the yearly option also comes with a really cool uh, exclusive Skinwalker Ranch Insider t-shirt uh, as well, which because I, I've always done the monthly subscription, I, I myself don't have one of those uh, special t-shirts, but, uh, but I've got my men without hats t-shirt and that's good enough. Right. <laughs> but um, you know, just real quickly, what are some of the things, Roger, that you like about being a Skinwalker Ranch insider? So um, first and foremost, one of the things that I love is the fact that through the insider program, I have met more people with the same like-mindedness of myself interested in Skinwalker Ranch, certainly, but just the uh, the phenomenology around UAPs, UFOs, paranormal, and again, you know, meeting people such as John um, and our good friend Dennis, it's you know, people make people make it so great, right? The insider group, uh, for the most part, for the, the large part, they are very kind people. Um, it's fun because you can engage in discussions and really have passionate discussions and talk about things that you otherwise wouldn't necessarily have the ability to talk with. Um, and so you think like, well, well, how do I talk to people, right? Well, not only do you have a chance to talk to insiders if you do go to something like a Phenomicon or whatnot, but uh, they've got a Discord server. Um, you know, they currently have a Facebook group, but even more important, um, they have uh, gone over to a new site. Um, it's on the platform Circle, um, and they just released an app for it. And so you can discuss uh, any topic around almost anything with all of the insiders. You can share information, you can share pictures, you can ask questions, and they have great moderation, and you can just interact with people right and left. And you can do that now from the comfort of your phone, from your iPad or your tablet or your computer. And it's just amazing, right? Because you get access to all these people. And even more importantly, on top of that, you get to talk to the people out of Skinwalker Ranch. They are there, they're active. They each have their own section. I know we talk about Caleb a lot. Caleb posts a lot there too. You know, you've got Eric on there. I mean, pretty much all of the uh, people out there interacts and it's just it's just amazing so i'm just going to go back and saying being the insider is well worth the that subscription fee because of all the great people you get to meet you form lifelong friendships and you just get a chance to discuss the really cool stuff that you wouldn't otherwise be able to discuss with people just walking down the street yes sir and john how about how about you what are some of the things that uh, you enjoy the most out of your experience being a skinwalker ranch insider ditto for everything roger just said I don't know how you could say it more perfectly and eloquently than that. It, it, for me, it's mostly been, um, yeah, it's the, the the interaction with other insiders and, um, you know, the, 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 the ease of access to seeing not only finding like-minded people, but finding people who see the same things and have different perspectives. So it, it can make me think, oh, I hadn't thought about this from that angle before. That's kind of interesting. 
And that might mean I'm wrong about this other thing. So I kind of like hearing people. And a lot of these people are way, way smarter than me. So it's, you know, I'm like, like, I, I know enough science to get by. That's it. You know, but some of these people are so advanced with, you know, physics and quantum physics and astrophysics and, and other related things. Geo we've had geologists and drillers and you name it. There's just all these people with all this expertise that are all on there. So it's great to hear their perspective to explain a little bit more about what's going on or to give some insight into something we saw that the guys didn't have time to talk about on the show. You know, I, I love that. Um, but yeah, but just meeting people, I mean, come on. Between this and Phenomicon, which isn't technically an insider's thing, but it basically it kind of is, right? It's, right. It, it's not it's, it's like an insider family reunion, right? Right, exactly. But I mean, after one Phenomicon, I didn't get to meet Roger, unfortunately, but this time I will. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm still, I'm already, you, Roger, we're friends. <laughs> it's too yep. late. Yep. We're friends. And, uh, and, and, and Jim, man, I swear, as soon as I met Jim, like we just had a connection, like, it was wild. And then, but there, and there's other people that are like that, that I just ran into. And, um, they're, they're going to be friends for life. Like you just said, you know, I mean, I, I couldn't even begin to name them all, but you know who I mean, you know, there's, yeah. it's, it's just was, it's, a it's, a, it's a nice, it's an interesting group of people. And there's some just absolutely fantastic, big hearted people, you know, behind the scenes and that you get to meet and it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, that's the thing that I keep going back to is the community that the Skinwalker Ranch Insider uh, group allows us to be a part of. It is truly my favorite online community that I've I've ever been a part of, and that includes my my own community that I built with my radio show, the the Soul of Synth Pop, and uh, you know, and everybody knows anybody that knows me knows that synthesizers are like one of my biggest passions. And so for something to take me away from synthesizers as much as it does, is it's got to be something really, really special. And being a Skinwalker Ranch insider is one of those uh, special things for me. It's a, it's a privilege that, that I hold very dear. And like both of you have said, I've met some of the finest people I've ever had the pleasure of crossing paths with. I've had the opportunity to get to know the marvelous gentlemen that work out at Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, every single one of them, Caleb and Thomas, Dragon, Eric, and Travis. Uh, hopefully I get to meet Jim Royston and Sam DeRiso at some point. I'd be, really like to meet them. And I still haven't met Uncle Jim Morse <laughs> yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to that. If for no other reason to talk with talk with him about some music because i understand he's he's a bit of a music fan himself so but uh the other great things that both of you touched upon for me would be the access uh to a lot of the behind the scenes information from the episodes of the secret of skinwalker ranch that we see because roughly only one percent or so of what's actually filmed on the ranch actually makes it into one of those 42 to 43 minute episodes of the secret of skinwalker ranch and so it's nice to have the team members give us that behind the scenes information to help us maybe connect some of the dots that the editing of the tv show maybe didn't do as good enough a job on that we would have liked it to and so having access to the the skinwalker ranch team and that that uh, behind the scenes info has been absolutely invaluable for gaining a better understanding of the work that they're doing out at Skinwalker Ranch. Um, there's also access to great spreadsheets and data, databases of uh, anomalies that have been reported out there. There's access, 24 seven access to the uh, live cameras at Skinwalker Ranch, uh, where you get to watch the live feed and see some really cool things occasionally. And um, yeah, it's just awesome. And like, like you said, John, Phenomicon, Skinwalker Ranch Insider has had a, a noticeable presence at Phenomicon the last couple of years. And of course, Roger and I are Phenomicon veterans. We've been going ever since the very first year that they held Phenomicon. And so for us, it, it really is when we come to Phenomicon, it's like coming to a, a family reunion, like a Skinwalker Ranch 
insider family reunion and meeting you last year at the first uh, insider meetup that Roger and I hosted. That was how you and I met John. And I met a lot of great insiders uh, through that activity that, that Roger yeah. and I sponsored and we're doing it again this year. And we're, we've got almost two and a half times the people that are coming this year that has attended last year. So how so are we going to fit us all into that restaurant? Well, <laughs> already been capped. <laughs> they're, we're getting the entire outside patio is, is being set aside for us. And they're, they've are they been absolutely wonderful to work with the uh, the restaurant, uh, the Vernal Brewing Company that that uh, did such a wonderful job of hosting us last year and and uh, can't wait to to do that again this year. So always looking forward to meet uh, meeting new Skinwalker Ranch insiders at Phenomicon and on the new website, which, of course, to find out more about all of this, folks, go to skinwalker-ranch.com to find out more about this amazing Skinwalker Ranch Insider program that we're talking about. And I can guarantee you that uh, our moderators, Heather and Michelle and Shannon, will take really good care of you because they are just awesome. And uh, we love them to death for the wonderful and oftentimes thankless job that uh, our moderators our moderators do. So massive tip of the hat to uh, Heather, Michelle, and Shannon for the awesome work they do. So there we go, folks. The Skinwalker Ranch Insider Program is awesome. Check it out today and join us. You know, come on in. All the cool kids are doing it. The water is fine, <laughs> as they say. So uh, back to Skinwalker Ranch. So we all agree that uh, this season, and, and for me, in particular, I have to I have to say, and I think John, you're you 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 articulated your point really well when you said that it's kind of for me. I wouldn't say that I've I've needed to had had have therapy from this set from this season, but oh my gosh, when Travis Taylor has told us in the past that what we're going to see is going to break our our perception of reality and things that we thought were possible. And that has happened to me a number of times in ways that I didn't expect it to. And I know that I've, I, I've said when Roger and I did our review of the cone episode, the, the cone zone episode, uh, which was about what, two episodes ago. Um, my jaw is still on the floor. I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to process everything that happened and the ramifications and implications if the measurements that they took during that experiment are, are in fact accurate, and if they can replicate them, John, that is going to change our world. Because if that really is what we, what we believe that it was, we are among the first people to see something like this. Right. And, and what, a, what, a, what, an, what an extraordinary thing. Roger, what are, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, to, to, to think that we may have been the first people on planet Earth to get a glimpse at what may very well be a traversable wormhole. Mind blown. What, are, what do you say? Yeah, I, you know, I've thought about this, especially since, since seeing the episode and all the episodes uh, leading up to that and just the, the theory of uh, a stable uh traversable wormhole you know one of the things that i've thought about is that you know worm wormholes and passing through them is entirely theoretical we've never been able to create one right this is just based on uh the science that people have put together observing you know uh the things that we know especially within quantum physics um now, should we be able to do that? But I, I guess this is why it's mind blowing because within that, e even though you're within that realm of science, you still have to take that leap of faith and and say and challenge that perception of reality. Can we do something like this? Do we actually know what we're seeing? And you know, based on current, at least my understanding, and again, I'll say it's really basic, but of quantum physics and and wormholes. It would take such a tremendous amount of gravity to bend time and space to do that. And yet, at least the preliminary results is that it's happening, but we're not being sucked into a black hole. We're not 
being, you know, we're not ripped apart. The earth is still standing. We're still rotating around the sun, right? And so something there is generating enough power that we, you know, we think, and how does that work, right? So I'm just, I'm open to the possibility that, you know, what we may think in our current understanding of physics is not necessarily you know, I think the principles are sound, but we still have so much to learn, right? And it just goes back to, you know, back in the, the Middle Ages when, you know, Isaac Newton was defining laws of gravity and thing, right? You know, the people once thought that, you know, the earth was the center of everything. And, you know, we learned about gravity and all these mathematical laws, right? And if people haven't, you know, if people weren't open to the idea that, we may not know everything and really try to document and understand and test. Like, I think it's just exciting because we are on the, like you said, we're on the threshold. We're on the precipice of seeing things that we've always dreamt are possible, but have never been able to actually, actually do. And it appears, you know, that whatever that they've captured there is lining up with a lot of the, the theories there. And, you know, I'd really like to ask somebody a question, you know, how do you generate enough power and how do you stabilize that? And where does it take you? When does it take you? How do you open it? How do you close it? Like, those are the questions that just continue to, I think about every day, right? And being able to, I mean, literally, and some people will probably laugh at me for saying this, but we're watching history, scientific history, the documentation of things that are happening there and with that foundation i mean this is this is life changing earth shattering you know the the things that we could build and push forward as we get more understanding from skinwalker ranch and the things and the phenomena that are happening there i mean are, are countless so i'm just super excited it's it's been a wild season and i can't wait to see more of what's documented and how they use that information for the betterment of mankind well said, sir. And John, uh, how about you? I know, I know you were equally gobsmacked by that episode yeah. as I was, and you and I have, have talked about it uh, ever since that episode aired. And um, are you are you still like me, trying to, you know, did I really see what I what I thought mm -hmm. I saw? Which I'm sure the guys on the team are probably still still asking themselves that question, you know, did I really see that or pinch me to make sure I'm awake? Mm -hmm. um, so what, how, how big of an impact did watching that episode have on you? How, how was it still impacting you several weeks later? And how excited are you at the possibility of what this could potentially be? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm still gobsmacked. I, I, I don't know how to process what we saw. And I kind of feel like, I feel like we truly still don't have the slightest idea what's going on there. We kind of have to toss out any presuppositions, you know, and just look at the data, follow the science, conduct the experiments and try not to get caught up on any one thing, because this is, it sure seems to me like this is something novel. This is something that we have not at least publicly experienced, you know, in, in public science, maybe, uh, there's some classified science somewhere where people have run into stuff like this, but we've never seen this before. I mean, think just in that one episode. I mean, well, let's back up an episode to the where the lasers got cut off. That's already that kind of freaked me out because I'm like, that can't happen. And I say this all the time. That can't happen, but it just happened. But right? it just did. But in the following episode, we have, and I'm kind of there's so much happening in this season, I forget what happened in which episode. And I forget what all happened in each episode because there was so much. But there were at least two things that can't happen in that, that other the, the second episode. One was the lasers going up and then just stopping. It can't happen unless there's something there stopping it. But it's midair. There no, should be nothing there. That can't happen. And there was nothing to the uh, for the naked eye, right? Exactly. You could see that, hey, there's stars there. There's the, yep. So... Yeah, it's you're right. It can't it happen. Happen, but it, we're watching it happen, right? right. Like yep. so, and then so that was one impossible thing that happened. I feel like who was it? It's I feel like we're in a 
Alice in Wonderland. Who was it that said, I try to imagine, you know, multiple impossible things before breakfast or whatever. Yeah, that's what this is. It's like all these impossible things are happening. So the second impossible thing that happened was the LIDAR scan that showed the cones. The LIDAR was reflecting off of something in midair. There's nothing there, but it was getting reflections. How in the world was it getting a reflection from nothing? And how was it uh, symmetrical? How did you have this, this conical uh, overall like surrounding? And then within that, you had symmetrical columns going up to the tip of the, the cone, which is and, where the laser was stopping. And this can't happen. Right. Well, what's more is remember Tom Winterton even, even mentioned the fact, look, there's swirl marks. So it's almost like it had some kind of rotation or motion to it, presumably. I mean, I'm I'm hardly yeah. a lidar expert, and we we don't have Pete Kelsey to 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 bounce that question off of. But but yeah, I mean, lidar and Pete has said numerous times in that episode and in subsequent ones how lidar would not be returning data if there was nothing for it to be bouncing off of, yep. and that's. Part of the reason why this is such a OMG WTF moment is because the data returns were there. And in regards to the, you know, we, we, we've come to call it the donut <laughs> in the triangle. Mm -hmm. Now it's donuts uh, or so it seems. And that's a form of the most important element of a scientific research process, which is obtaining repeatable results. And what I mean by that is go back to, I think it was the very last episode of season four, where that big void area in the triangle showed up when Omnitech, or maybe maybe it was, uh, was Omnitech or Lunasan that did the, the scan? It was Omnitech, I think. Yeah, it was, yeah they were. It was, they were presenting it was, that at the end of season four. Yeah. And so that was kind of like the very first time we saw the donut. And then the very first episode of season five, Jim Royston got a great 3D model rendering of it. Where? Right there at ground level in the same spot there in the triangle. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, it was actually it was actually up in the air. For that one so the second time so the first time it was at ground level and i think the episode one showed that it was actually above the triangle where they got it and it was still the same symmetrical shape so it matched i it identified you know i guess it's identical to the one that was on ground when they compared the two and then pete's was of course underground right and yep. LIDAR is not supposed to be able to penetrate the ground. It's supposed to only pick up data points that are at ground level or up in the sky. And it's great because it can reveal things that are not visible to the naked eye. And so, again, you got that repeatable result in the form of those, you know, what, what they're affectionately referring to as donuts. Uh, but it again it's a piece of that puzzle that kind of leads us the, the data leads us in that direction and john you said it perfectly because that's exactly what skinwalker ranch is all about for those who pay attention and that is that the team is driven by the results of the data that they are observing there on skinwalker ranch and you know, again, whether it's with the lasers that you that you mentioned, John, or with the this cone thing, um, your eyes can't believe what they're seeing. And to have the team address it, you know, we 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 had the uh, the opportunity as insiders to hear the team kind of break it down in a little greater detail than what we got on the episodes, and it just, for me, only further substantiated my sense of awe and complete wonderment when I was watching that, because again, we're, we're delving into the, the area of, of true unknowns where there's been all kinds of theories, you know, going back to the, the concept of the Einstein Rosen bridge, right. Where, where time and space fold together and you can create, you know, basically, basically the rules of time and space, 
can be bent. They can, they can change. And you can, you can take a place that's, you know, conceivably millions upon millions of light years away from each other, two points and fold that time and space to where their travel between them can be almost instantaneous uh, or in fact is instantaneous. And we've read about this for, for years and, you know, there's been all kinds of great astrophysicists and scientists that have written volume after volume of, uh, of, of very well-informed theories on this topic. But this may be the very first time that we are seeing some of that theory really, truly looking like they, that it, this stuff may be real. And the implications of that, you know, you mentioned, Roger, you know, how is this possible? Because, and, and I remember I, I actually asked Eric Bard this question via uh, Jeff Freeman's uh, Jfree906 podcast a couple of weeks ago, was I was like, well, is it possible that there's some unknown gravitic anomaly on the ranch that's causing some of this time dilation that we've, we've seen uh, occur on the ranch? And, you know, also obviously gravity we know through some of these theories about black holes is that the gravity is so intense that it you know not even light can escape it right so if that's the case and if there's a wormhole opening you know here on our planet how is it able to do so without completely ripping the, the planet to shreds right so uh, again all the computer models and again i'm I'm not at all a physicist. I don't have any scientific degrees. I mean, I, I barely, barely passed uh, <laughs> my science classes in high school. So um, my, my understanding of, of such things is very limited, but I do read a lot about these kinds of subjects. And the stuff that I've read is, it's just, it indicates that to be able to create a situation such as uh, would cause a wormhole to form, you would need massive amounts of negative energy. And we just don't know, you know, how to really make that happen. But what if, John, and I'll pose this question to you, and then, you know, Roger, feel free to chime in here. But what if, to an extent, we've got it all wrong, and these wormholes just happen naturally and maybe they don't require all the things that we think that they need to in fact happen maybe it's something that's triggered on by way of consciousness of some kind you know we we just don't know and so to, to that end john what you know what 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 is it that really truly excites you about this and and you know what where do you think this could go if they continue to get repeatable results in taking some of these measurements. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I I think what's exciting is it feels like we're up for some new science. You know, like we're, we're toying with something that we truly do not understand. And they finally reached a point uh, where they can repeat. You know, the, the first couple of seasons, they weren't quite sure what was repeatable. So you, you had, it was kind of a scattershot approach. But now they have so many things that they can reliably recreate, or at least to some extent, that I think they might be able to start, you know, developing some truly novel science to explain what's going on. And, you know, I don't know if it's a wormhole or, it, it, you know, because as we even understand it, you know, a wormhole <clears throat> wouldn't would require absurd amounts of energy that we can't produce. And even if you could, you know, I don't know how you make it traversable because as i understand it like at the middle of the throat of the wormhole it becomes infinitely small <laughs> but that's all based on our understanding right. i clearly do not understand it um but it still could be what you would call a wormhole where you can suddenly just disappear in one spot and reappear over here you know to me that's a wormhole whether it's a te technically a wormhole or not who knows if that's what this is um it could be um, I have a feeling it is tied to what is in the Mesa. You know, I feel like there is something anchored there. And I just have a feeling that that's the cause of what we're seeing. And that there's, there's something generating something that we do not understand. And it's stuck in the Mesa. Um, or it's under the 
triangle area, or it's all related. Like maybe it's all, maybe there's more to it than we see. Um, but I think it's going to lead us to some novel science. And, and that's very exciting because clearly we don't understand what even happened in that other episode. Like there's all, already multiple things have happened in this season and previous seasons that do not make any sense based on our current physics at all. Especially the laser stuff, the LIDAR stuff, the multiple times. There's clearly something messing with time or space. Somehow it's breaking GPS, it's breaking LIDAR, it's breaking, even remember the, the experiment with the helicopters going around the the, 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 the anomaly, you know, right. from one direction, you could get that 1.6 gigahertz signal from the other direction. You couldn't, that can't happen. It's there's, it's just air. There's nothing there. What, you know, so clearly there's something novel happening that we have never experienced before and why in the world it's locked into a location at in Utah boggles my mind but yeah, yeah i'm gonna start yeah. rambling any second but i think it's just it, i'm excited by what's to come with the novel science that we uh travis and eric and others come up with just in, to, to they're going to need to develop new th ways to explain what in the world we're seeing and it could be really a fascinating next few years i agree it it has the capability of the the possibility of changing our current understanding of science and physics and how can we not be excited about about that i mean that that's the kind of thing that really really gets me going it's not you know i i obviously i i have an interest in the the you know the the, the paranormal aspect of it but the science is what really gets me going and what the possibilities are and we We've just simply not had access to this kind of experience and this kind of scientific investigation to the extent that we've had it through both the docu-series, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, and as being members of the Skinwalker Ranch Insider Program, where we get an even closer look and even more detailed explanations on the things that happen in the docu-series. So Roger, same same question to you. What does it do for you? What 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 how big of an impact have these more significant moments this season had on your your view of maybe not just science but maybe perhaps the the universe that we live in? What you know, what does what does that do for you? What does it do to you? So I it really hard to put that into what I would say a coherent uh, sentence or words or understanding, but I'll do my best. So first off, I think that with what is being shown and what has been discovered um, on the secret of Skinwalker Ranch is that our understanding of the universe is pretty limited and our universe is more infinitely vast and complex than we can even comprehend and understand. Um, and I think just the capacity of our mindset, right? We are, I don't know. I think we're all set up as, as humans to judge time in a linear fashion, right? To make moments and mark things like this has happened. This is what I'm planning to do, right? There's, there's a very we understand things kind of in a linear in a linear way to help us make sense of the world right and so there are some concrete concrete objectives or ideas that we hold on to to help us make sense of the world around us which i think is great right it it grounds us in our current reality but at the same time i think that our perception of the world is not it's just one tiny speck of the, the spectrum out there or what we understand this universe to be. And, you know, you said, you know, could this be something naturally occurring? And I definitely think that is a, a high possibility just for one is that we already know that there are things that we can't see with our own eyes, right? You change the spectrum and all of a sudden more things show up. Right, whether that's on infrared, you're using like a flare camera, 
or you look at different frequencies and right we are now starting to see that there is more to this world than what meets the eye um and i genuinely believe that you know i mean it kind of goes to that interdimensional theory that we can coexist and walk in a plane and there could be other beings people i don't know right that are interacting in the same you know the same place as we are but it's in a different spectrum it's on a you know it's interdimensional right i think there's more than one dimension out there and right we just don't have a way at least naturally as humans to perceive that um i also firmly believe that like whether to john your point whether it's a wormhole whether it's a portal and things like that i i think that i think it's a high possibility as well that what's ever at skinwalker ranch could be artificially generated or if there is something that's naturally occurring there some someone some thing some entity some who whatever that may be has the technology to be able to tap into that and can control it as a means of potentially travel right and so i think that there's you know we already know that there's something in the sky that can exist block physical light laser beams and we're not able to see it we can fly through that space and not experience anything right there's nothing solid in the air that we can observe through you know flying things through it um you know day night or you know daytime at nighttime you know they've caught glimpses of things especially like with the rockets and the smoke you know the telescopes doing strange things you know, so we know that there's something in there. And I think that's even more concrete evidence, you know, John, as you mentioned, with that laser light just cutting into something, something is clearly there because that laser light is blocked, but then it comes out the other side. So why can't we see what that what is there? Why are we seeing through it? And then how does light get blocked and then all of a sudden just start at that 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 next height? Like that's just beyond my my understanding. So, I mean, just to kind of sum that up, I think we're on the, again, the precipice of just understanding so many things that in the past, like you don't know what you don't know, but you won't find out unless you start asking those questions. And I think we have more, more so now in, in our modern day, the technology, the science, the understanding, and most importantly, the curiosity to see what's more beyond our world and what's out there. And because of that passion, we have more people focusing on that. And I, again, like John stated, I'm excited. There's just so much more to discover. And I mean, I'm I'm here for the journey. And I, as long as I live, I will be a lifelong learner and open to things that shouldn't happen, but they do. Very well said, Roger. Very well said. So let me ask both of you this. Um, and I, I got to figure out how to articulate this myself. But how big of a role, if any, we've heard so much about how there is this precognitive, sentient, non-human intelligence at the ranch that was experienced both with the interactions that the NIDS team, that Robert Bigelow's team experienced when they were doing their research on the ranch, and also to an extent that the current team that Brandon Fugel has ascended, uh, assembled for, um, for the current research. So is it perhaps, is this pre, if such a thing does exist, this precognitive sentient non-human intelligence at the ranch, is this potentially what is, do you guys think that this could potentially be part of solving the key to some of these mysteries? Is potentially this precognitive sentient NHI controlling some of this phenomena? Or is that in and of itself the phenomena? What are, what are your thoughts on that? Roger, we'll start with you. So, yeah, I may have a different opinion um, than other people. And again, I am completely open to this. I do firmly believe 
that there is what I would say a non-human entity of sorts that does have that precognition. Um, because we know that not only the the, uh, the NIDS team um, state that they experienced that, but we also have firsthand testimony from the people out of the Skinwalker Ranch currently that there seems to be something there that has already anticipated their moves um, and either helps the investigation or hinders the investigation in some way that gives them like, okay, how do we, how do we go about altering the experiment and trying to get a result, right? But then no matter what they do, sometimes they get progress and sometimes that they don't. So I do think that something there is there that um, we can't explain that, but does have that ability to, I don't know, either see into the future a little bit or to read people's minds at an extremely accelerated rate and understand intentions and purposefully manipulate events to do that. That is one possible theory. I am also of, of the mind to say that that's not the only thing that's happening out there. I think that there are multiple I think there are multiple, whether that is entities, whether that is, you know, you've got, again, things coming through a portal or a wormhole from a different time or an era such as the dire wolf and things that have been seen out there that are completely separate from whatever non-human entity is out there. I also think that you might have whether that's you know native to this planet, extraterrestrial, interdimensional, something there that is also manipulating events. There seems to be a a targeted thing where UAPs are coming in, and you know this is just me making a a theory. But a lot of those UAPs that they see coming down, especially this season, you know when they looked at it on the infrared, right? You see this UAP descending down. And slowly going into the Mesa. I mean, to me, that's like, okay, we got something coming in, right, and landing. And we've seen UAPs do different things. And then you also have UAPs out there that are following the helicopters or have that appearance that they're checking things out, right? And if they're checking things out, is that different? Is this some other type of species or whatever is out there? Then somebody that can already see in the future and already knows what's going on, right? So I don't know. Those are a lot of ifs and some pretty wild theories out there, but I think it's more than just one thing. I think there's multiple things going on, um, but I do think that they all lead to something very coherent and understandable for, you know, something in the future to help redefine how we think and look at the universe. John, how about you? Yeah, I. That's really interesting. I, I, th I think, th I agree also that there's probably multiple things going on, but I don't know what the reason for that is. And Roger already touched on one thing. Uh, you know, we're we're kind of primed to see time linearly because that's how we experience it. But we already know from relativity that time is not linear. You know, it, it's you know, space time is a thing, at least as far as we know. But you know, time is not linear, so. What 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 if the ultimate answer to this is that there's something there that experiences time differently than us? You know, like we're in three dimensions, right? Three dimensions of space plus one of time. Um, and as far as we know, we can only go forward in this one dimension of time. Correct. What if there's two dimensions of time, and and this other whatever this other thing is can move in that dimension as well as our dimension of time? Who knows? Um, maybe that's why it seems precognitive because it can move around, it can maneuver in ways in in temporal dimensions that we can't because we can only go forward in one direction and it's it and it can just it can maneuver differently. Maybe who knows? Um, what if, um, what if, what another thing, what if there's a what if there, imagine there's a multiverse? What if this is a nexus? of multiple universes that are rubbing up against each other and has created some sort of weak spot and all of these different things that we keep seeing there that make no sense whatsoever truly are different things they're all just as confused as we are because they're on the other side of that 
experiencing this this weak spot from their reality going what in the hell is this you know and and they have no idea what's going on i mean that's a very real possibility that whatever this is if it is sentient and conscious or has a consciousness it could whatever it is could be just as thoroughly confused about what's going on as us maybe maybe it is this ties into i think the two things i'm excited about consciousness and time i think we're going to learn some things about both at, when we get some answers and what what if this thing is more of a consciousness focused well, and that's... Rather than a physical being like us and it's it doesn't understand us either. And it's just trying to reach out to communicate in ways that it has the ability to, to manifest and, and manipulate in, in our reality, just trying to send us messages because it doesn't like, I don't know how to get through to these people. I keep sending them these lights and I keep doing this other stuff. And I think this is really cool and makes perfect sense to me. They don't get it. What do I do to get through to these people? So who, who knows? It, it, well, right. think of it this way, folks. Is it any coincidence that Robert Bigelow is now devoting a significant part of his time and money to the study of consciousness mm -hmm. and specifically to the concept of determining, is there in fact life after death is, you know, the, and again, it, it, it depends entirely upon how you, the viewer view this particular word. Some people use the word consciousness if you happen to be of a religious upbringing, you're going to say your spirit, uh, your soul, your life force, your energy, however you choose to describe that particular word. And for the sake of just simplicity, we'll refer to it as consciousness. But for me and Roger, and I would imagine for you as well, John, we also, you know, use that, you know, think of it in terms of spirituality and you know, the, the things that we've been taught regarding whatever our individual denominations uh, for religion have taught us about such things. But I absolutely agree with you, John, because I think consciousness plays a much larger role in all of this mystery than any of us may understand. Um, and I, I don't know how to articulate that other than to just say that's what I think. I think that consciousness plays a tremendous role in figuring out what some of this mystery is, because we've already talked about it in this conversation already about how we know that there are things all around us, not just at Skinwalker Ranch necessarily, but wherever we are in this world on planet Earth where there are things all around us that our eyes cannot see, that our five senses cannot sense, but yet we know that they are there. And in the simplest terms, you know, look at something like cosmic rays and gamma rays. Microwaves, we can't see them, but yet we know that they are there because there are trace, they, they leave traces of things that we can detect with technology, right? So just because we can't see these things without the assistance of something like infrared, and like you said, Roger, increasing our view of the various spectrums that are out there within you know, the electromagnetic spectrum, when we're able to get a better understanding and get better technology that allows us to see portions of that wider spectrum that we can't see naturally, then again, that opens up a whole world of possibility. And how do we communicate with stuff like that? Just as you were saying, John, maybe whatever it is that's out there is on that higher plane of dimensional existence, if you will, just to you know throw a point a term out there. And again, folks, forgive me if I'm articulating this poorly, but I've said it in the past and I don't really have anything other than faith, for want of a better word, to to base this statement off of that I'm going to stay right say right now is I will not be surprised if we eventually someday find out that consciousness is the predominant life form in the universe. 
and that what we experience with our bodies of flesh and bone, these, you know, this mortal coil, as we call it, uh, this is how we are in our 3D existence. And I myself, I believe that when we die, the thing that makes us who we are, our personality, all the love and the knowledge that we receive in this lifetime, I believe that continues on after we experience what we would call physical death and that we go into this other plane of existence. And again, whatever you, the viewer, happens to believe on those particular things. If you're an atheist, you believe, you know, once we die, that's it, you know? And if that works for you, awesome, great, go with it. If you're more agnostic and you're like, well, there might be something else out there, but because I can't see it and I don't see any evidence of it, I'm not going to say I believe in it, but I'll keep an open mind about it. You know, there's some people that are like that. And then you have people like myself, like Roger, and, you know, forgive me if I'm making too much of an assumption, but I would presume you as well, John, believe that when we pass away, when we die, that that spirit, that consciousness, that life force, that energy, that essence, that soul lives on. And I believe that that happens with all living things. And I don't mean to get new agey, but that's just, that's just, it's something that would make sense to me, I guess is, is the best way I can, I can say it without digging myself into more of a hole than I've probably already dug myself into with some of our awesome viewers out there. But I, I think that that's potentially one of the things, if not the thing that we really need to keep keep in the back of our minds at least when we're we're considering things like skinwalker ranch because i think there is evidence of another intelligence out there that is not human that may be existing on a different plane or a different dimension than we are and again just as we can you know look at goldfish in a pond and we can reach down and you know we can see them we don't know to what extent they can see and are aware of us. But if we wanted to, we could go into their environment and see them as they are in their environment underwater, their dimension, their world, if you will. And if we try to, you know, bring them into our world, you know, take them out of their environment, they have limitations. They can't breathe, you know, and who knows what would go through the mind of a fish when it's, you know, when it's caught and it's seeing this, you know, funny looking creature that, clearly doesn't need water to to move around and, and breathe in so why would we think it'd be any different if there is a another kind of being or kind of civilization or race whatever you want to call it maybe maybe that's who we really are is this this intelligence that's out there and that we're just in this different stage of evolution eternal evolution as it were and again i realize i've gone <laughs> Woo! But, uh, you know, these are these are the things that 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 I think about. And these are part of the things that excite me about Skinwalker Ranch. And I do not think in the slightest that it's in a, that's a, that it's a coincidence that Bob Bigelow is now devoting his time to the study of consciousness and to things like that. So. Uh, guys, bring me back to Earth. <laughs> I, I have a question that uh, I'd pose to both of you. Um, and, you know, again, it, it goes around in the realm of consciousness. And I've seen it talked about, you know, within the realm of the paranormal, especially around the subject of cryptids and Bigfoot. But do you think that there is a possibility as a collective conscious? like effort because there are more people centered around the same type of things ideas can our consciousness either be made manifest into things that we see or could that be with that consciousness and the focus that another whether that is uh, sentience intelligence takes that and is like oh because of the amount of energy being poured there i will help make that manifest and see it 
again, no way to correlate or prove that point either way, but I was just curious of what you guys think. John? No, I, that, that's right in line with the concept of what's called an egregore or a tulpa or a thought form where uh, a collective, putting collective conscious energy on an idea can manifest that idea as, as some sort of energetic being or manifesting some type of reality or um you know a, a spirit or an evil demon or whatever you know if you're if you're casting a spell on a you know you want to hex someone or whatever you know it's it's this idea of co essentially conjuring up something but it's all the same concept that by focusing conscious energy on something you can create something that maybe wasn't there before that actually is some sort of energetic thing whether it, i don't know if it, you I don't know. I don't know what evidence there is for that, but there's a lot of people that suggest that this is a reality. And I kind of think, uh, especially in relation to the ranch and similar places, um, I think there's something to that. I've often wondered if I've said this before, but it's been a while. I don't know if I've ever said it on here, but uh, I wonder if the ranch is a, is a weird place because so many people think it's a weird place. Right. You see where I'm going with that? Like it started yeah. off something initially started off the weirdness. Clearly, there's something like uh, and there's something physically in the Mesa. There are there are physical, tangible things that are there that could have created the, the initial impetus that you know that pushed the the ball down the hill, but then and that created the, the the mythology of all this weird stuff that the people local were seeing. But then as news of the ranch spread more people start thinking of the ranch as a weird place. Well, what if that very thing is altering the experiment? You know, what What if we're changing the experiment by even talking about the ranch and talking about the weird stuff at the ranch? What if that puts energy into something that now is creating something new that wasn't there until we started thinking that? If you want to go down a really deep rabbit hole, start thinking about that and it'll get really weird. No, really fast you but both... i've thought about that type of thing before and i don't have a, a good answer for that at all you you both bring up excellent points i mean how many examples are there of we see people of faith will get together and pray together as a group and they seem to be able to use that positive energy those positive vibes if you will and we have seen seemingly on the surface anyway miraculous things happen people getting healed people you know uh farmers that are in areas of drought that just you know pray for rain and people fast and pray and then all of a sudden the skies open and and the rain falls and so you know i've, I've heard it said that the human mind is the is the greatest quantum computer that there is and i I tend to believe that in my very limited, you know, Raiders fan brain uh, that's not even fully functional most of the time. That that makes sense to me. How I don't know, but it does. But I I absolutely think that that's a possibility. You know, um, is it possible that, that these that this faith or this massive belief that people have can manifest things into being? Because I'm a person of faith, I have to answer that question as a yes. I believe that's a possibility. Because if you are a person of faith, then you believe in things that are not seen. It's the belief, right? Um, and for people that are not people of faith, they require something more sub substantive, right? As, as far as proof goes. And they're going to look at more um, more logical explanations to seemingly extraordinary things whether it be skinwalker ranch or cryptids or what have you so i absolutely think that that such a thing is possible is that potentially what could be happening here uh again i have to say very possibly uh, absolutely excellent gosh excellent conversation <laughs> we're having here tonight guys this is this is awesome can i add an addendum to mine to my answer because i the, to roger's question I, i'll keep it short but i was kind of hesitating whether to mention this but in a way it almost seems too on the nose not to mention it i'll keep it short 
many years ago, probably 15 years ago, I wanted to be a writer. I was taking fiction writing classes and you know, working on my writing chops. And I, I, I keep a note, a, a, a notebook of story ideas. And one of the story ideas, this is going to be hilarious. I can't believe this. One of the story ideas was a sci-fi story about this entity, an alien of some variety, was trapped on Earth somehow. And it's so different from us. It, it did not know how to communicate with people. But it could do it through consciousness. But it couldn't do it while people were awake. So, it could, But it could do it while people were asleep. And it could interact with their dreams. And he found this one particular guy whose dreams, he was able to interact with him more during his dreams. And a side effect of this was that this entity was able to start making the guy's dreams become reality. And that's how the guy notices something weird is happening is he starts dreaming stuff that turns out to happen. And the whole reason behind it is because this alien who only can speak through consciousness is trying to, he thinks this is how you communicate and just the natural process of it is creating this reality, you know, creating things that the guy was dreaming. And it just hit me while we were talking about it, that that's kind of the story of the ranch. What if there is an entity there that is conscious, more consciousness based, and it's just trying to communicate. And by pouring that energy into the ranch, it's manifesting things that people think about right. and starts creating weird stuff. I don't know if that, and here's what's weird though. If that's what's actually happening, how do you, how do you investigate that? If your own thoughts about the place can change the experiment, how do you, how do you remove? Well, look you, at, yeah. Look at how many focus groups we've done with the Skinwalker Ranch and Cider Group. And right. quite obviously the, the 33 experiment from a couple of years ago yielded yep. absolute to me anyway, tangible results, right? That how do you explain it? And there are these stories of how you can have random number generators and have people just start focusing on one particular number. And then lo and behold, it comes up in a sequence. Now, is that just simply random coincidence or is it potentially, like you said, is it, is it something on a, on a consciousness level or that quantum computing level, that quantum consciousness, if that's even a thing that, that could be, facilitating something like this to happen and again i'll add one thing too when you're done jim tacos go ahead <laughs> I, I was just gonna say you know based on you know that john you know your thought and you know that that writing experience i mean let's let's go with that and say that is one one thing that's happening out there at the ranch there is something that is trying to communicate that could potentially explain the mythology behind, you know, look at the Native American mythologies and the things that they've passed down and the things that they've experienced. What if something out there was trying to communicate, right? And the Native Americans or indigenous peoples around the world are like, we don't understand. And so they're thinking like, what is this? How does this fit into our own understanding, our own belief system, our own moral codes? And right. And so that perpetuates and it continues and continues. And it's a communication that just goes back and forth, back and forth with neither party, either maybe understanding or maybe one party that really is and trying to manifest and saying, like, I will show you things as you're ready for them, as you as humankind take that step. Right. But if you show a propensity that this is going to be dangerous, it steps back. I don't know, but it's so cool to think about. Absolutely, guys. Wow. <laughs> Didn't know we were going to be going this deep, did you, folks? Man, well, uh, yeah. So, consciousness, it's a thing. Uh, I really firmly believe that. And, um, yeah, it's just one of the things that I get so excited about when I think about what could help us potentially unlock some of these mysteries and and i i joke about it sometimes but at the same time i'm serious when i say everything is about consciousness and frequency and quite obviously we see the importance of frequency almost every week that we we watch the secret of skinwalker ranch because obviously there's that 1.6 gigahertz frequency that appears to trigger some of the uh anomalous 
phenomena that that is caught on camera there uh but obviously being a having a background in audio engineering and in producing music for as long as i have frequency is my job i mean that's that's kind of what my my ability to do my job revolves around is the understanding of frequencies and you know how to you know tweak a something in the high frequency range or in the low mid range and you know i mean that's I, I, I understand it at least on that foundational basis as far as frequency goes. But I think when we start talking about things like resonant frequency, you know, the frequency at which things vibrate, you know, is it, is it possible as some people say that, you know, human beings can, you can induce hallucinations with certain resonant frequencies and things like that. And, you know, I, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole too much because we're getting into, you know, realms that are way over way over my head and we could probably devote a whole episode to stuff like that but but yeah i think consciousness and frequency are part of the keys to unlocking the mystery at least that's that's what i think agreed agreed yeah so let's let's get back to another thing about season five that took us into uh some territory that I myself was not anticipating when the season began. And that is, of course, this uh, creature that we're still, as of right now, not sure exactly what this this uh, strange predator animal is that has left trace evidence on Skinwalker Ranch. And by a lot of accounts and some of the research that has been done by credentialed biologists, uh, there seems to be an indication anyway of a possibility of there being a long extinct species of predator. Uh, specifically, we're talking obviously about the dire wolf or perhaps even some genetic descendant of what we would call a dire wolf, an, an animal that went extinct over 10,000 years ago. Um, was the dire wolf, was that on any of your any of your uh, dance cards before the season began, John? <laughs> no, no. It that's so weird. <laughs> I mean, if that's what it turns out to be, that's shockingly weird. In, in, in a slightly different way than the the lasers and and that sort of thing. Like this is. Then you have to figure out. Okay, is this some long lost descendant of the dire wolf? you know, the, that's just been here and we just have never noticed. And it's been roaming the hills of eastern Utah and western Colorado, you know, for ever and no one's seen one. You know, I don't, that wouldn't make a lot of sense. And so then if you're like, if it turns out to be an actual dire wolf and we'll be able to tell if they did DNA tests, we'll know. It will be definitive, I think. Um, that That raises a lot of questions. And I wouldn't even begin to know. <laughs> I don't even know what questions we would have to ask other than how in the hell did it get here? You know, like, is, is there a portal here? Because there's been other stories of other stuff appearing over the years. You know, there's the the wolf creature that uh, the Shermans saw that I don't know that they said it was a dire wolf in the book. I think I'd have yeah. to go back and reread well, the description of it. Yeah, uh, the, the, the wolf that the Shermans saw yeah. and that uh, Chris Bartell saw when exactly. he was when he was working at skinwalker ranch yep. uh roger correct me if i'm wrong but chris bartell said that that particular wolf was actually about the size of a donkey and that's a lot bigger my understanding that that's bigger than a dire wolf uh would have been so you know it certainly I matches the descriptions of the dire wolf i don't know if anybody can claim that it's you know, that it was specifically, and I can't remember, John, to your point, if the Shermans thought it was a dire wolf or if uh, Bob Bigelow and his team said it's most likely what you saw was a was a dire wolf. But it certainly it certainly seems to be in that same realm. Right. It was a big dog slash wolf thing. So maybe a. Uh... Maybe if it really was a dire wolf, they didn't really know what it was because it's a big, bigger than a dog, not quite a wolf, 
you know, I, I'd have to go back and look and see how they described it in the book. And of course, the book would being written by George Knapp, who's translating what they described. Right. Maybe, the, who knows, maybe something was even lost in that translation too. So what made it to the pages isn't an entirely accurate. So who knows? But that, very, yeah, very well could be a real thing that there's something that's there. And maybe, here's the intriguing thing. And it goes back to the other idea about cryptids. Some people think Bigfoot is some sort of interdimensional creature, right? Like right. the reason you can't find the dead ones is because they aren't there. They're somewhere else. They only pop in over here occasionally and then pop back out. But what if that's what's happening with you know, this wolf, this dire wolf thing, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's that's certainly got to be up for consideration. The As you said, John, the DNA testing results, which my understanding is that they're 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 they've done that and they're waiting for the results back or if they've got the results back they're they're just waiting for the the right opportunity an appropriate opportunity to uh to release those findings but the way i see it it's either going to end up being a confirmation that yes this dna conclusively proves that it is uh heretofore thought to be extinct predator animal known as a dire wolf or the genetic sequence will show that it's some heretofore unknown genetic descendant of a dire wolf that is potentially a new new species that has yet to be cataloged that very well could be indigenous to the Uinta Basin and, as you said, John, western Colorado and uh, south southwestern Wyoming, you know, whatever type of range and at such an animal may conceivably have and then there's of course the really left field possibility which is maybe it is an actual dire wolf that if there is a situation where active portals exist on the ranch who knows when and how they appear let's say there's a dire wolf from back in you know, 10, 15,000 years ago, that's doing its thing, wherever it's doing its thing. And all of a sudden this portal or this field opens up and unbeknownst to the animal, it just walks into that field. And all of a sudden it's instantly transported to, you know, in the Sherman's case, 1994, mm -hmm. Chris Bartel's case, 2010, or, you know, in the current team's case, 2023. And these animals are just none the wiser for it. So, and if such an extraordinary situation were the explanation for why a dire wolf would be there, then wouldn't that DNA, it would show as fresh and would show it to be a recent creature, right? I mean, it would, the DNA would not indicate that it's 10,000, 13,000, 14,000 years old. It would show you know, that it's a recently deceased animal, or, or so I would think. I mean, I don't understand DNA testing, but if you're literally bending time and time traveling, essentially, taking something that is alive and well in, you know, 10,000 BC, and then bring it to the 21st century, it's still going to be alive. It's just existing in a different time. Like we were talking moments ago about the non-linear non-linear nature of time right so is that a possibility who knows but the whole dire wolf thing was absolutely something i was not expecting <laughs> to revisit outside of the the hunt for the skinwalker book uh to be yep. perfectly honest i mean i just was not expecting that and i'm sure the team were not expecting that that either so that was one moment where i was like really come on guys honestly it was I mean, a little weird at, at first i was like come <laughs> on n n no please and, but then again they're following the data they're following a process okay why are we saying this well because we've we've gone through steps a b and c and now we're at step d and we have to at least acknowledge that this is one of several possibilities as opposed to just simply dismissing it out of hand because it's so 
outlandish. The, the very notion is, is outlandish, right? So that was something that for me was completely unexpected, completely blindsided me as a viewer. Um, and I have to say, I'm extremely excited and uh, curious to see how that pans out. Roger, revisit that moment for me, uh, what it was like for you and where you are right now with how you view that particular chapter of this season. Yeah, I, I think it's actually one of the more exciting discoveries. And I think it, again, it opens up the possibilities um, of the things that we know go on at the ranch there. I think it lends credibility to the past stories there, you know, like stated by the Shermans or Chris Bartell. You actually now have um, an animal and by all, you know, at least the, we're still waiting further DNA analysis. And I do think that they will bring that forward at some point. And whether that's like at the very end of the season or there's another episode dedicated to it. Um, but you definitely have an expert that has looked at it and compared bone structures to what we have modern day, you know, wolf, uh, the different varieties and species. And when you look at there, there is no refuting the what we know is a dire wolf and the bones that we have found that we know, okay, you know, 10,000 years ago, these things roamed here, right? And then the comparison to that to the other wolf species and that of the dire wolf, and it most closely resembles the dire wolf, there is something to that. Can I conclusively say, oh yeah, that's 100% a dire wolf, but no, it lends, like for me, it's another piece of that evidence. And so I was excited about it because as Travis Taylor said, and, you know, if you read the the Skinwalker books, you know, Hunt for Skinwalker or Skinwalkers of the Pentagon, you know, these things can be what they are, stories, ghost stories, if you will, um, right? But now you actually have proof that some of these stories, you know, we should start believing people if they see, I mean, I've seen things that I can't explain. I can't give you a tangible proof there. I wish I could and say, well, yes, right, here you go. But I think that's what's happening here. And that's why I think it's an exciting discovery. And when you think about cryptids, I'm going to go, because I wasn't able to, I was not able to make Phenomicon last year. So I don't know, um, I haven't been able to go through the different uh, uh, talks, but the prior year when they had Expedition Bigfoot and Dr. Maria Mayer was there and she gave her presentation one thing that has stuck with me about that presentation is she discovered a new species out there in Madagascar, um, you know, a primate. And she had seen the clues. She had gone searching of this and right. She didn't have any conclusive evidence, but her dedication and the scientific approach, she found a new species, right? Hidden in plain sight there. And that has always stuck with me because who's to say that, you know, at least from a scientific nature, kind of, John, like what you said, I honestly believe that there could be a species of dire wolf that is alive and thriving today. We just haven't seen them mm -hmm. for whatever reason. I can't explain that. Um, but I also believe, and especially with the cryptid or the, you know, the cryptozoology, that different animals, these different things that people see across the world have crossed through time potentially or through a different place and they briefly interact with us and thus we see these things, but it happens frequently enough that we can document it and it makes sense. So which which is it? Could it be one or the both? Could it be both? Could it be, <laughs> right? We, we don't know, but I guess to, to sum that up, it's extremely exciting to actually see that we now have potential evidence, physical, concrete evidence, and at least based on bone structure, um, that that's a juvenile dire wolf, you know, based on an expert. And, you know, that lead, that lends credence to those stories. So they're no longer stories anymore. They become personal examples backed up by some of this evidence. And again, I think it just lends more credence to that what is happening on Skinwalker Ranch is exciting. John, how about you? 
What was the question? My mind's fried now. <laughs> <laughs> we lost John oh. back at consciousness. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, Very well. Yeah, that's right. I was while well, I was thinking. Well, first of all, I was thinking about the the DNA thing you mentioned. That I, I had gone. I had sidetracked myself with the DNA idea. I had heard, and I still need to verify this, but I had heard that we have DNA from a, uh, the extinct dire wolf that someone found, you know, viable DNA in some ancient specimen. So we have that data. So if they run the DNA on this thing and it basically exactly matches that, you know, to like 99.99999% or whatever it, we would expect from similar, the same species, that right there tells you that this is not a current living, you know, species that's been here for the last 10 to 13,000 years because over that much time you would think the dna would have diverged a little bit maybe not a lot but maybe a little more than that so if it's yeah. essentially identical except other you know not like they're twins or anything but if it's close enough to identical that's kind of interesting but, but if it says no it actually looks like something that started as a dire wolf but you can see it's got other dna from these other families and maybe it merged with a it's a hybrid with this dog or something you know that would be interesting data too, but it'll all be in the DNA. So I, I'm dying to hear what that is. But yeah, we've heard so many stories about portals, uh, like in the Hunt for the Skinwalker book. You know, the, the guys are sitting the the report of a, a portal opening up out in the field, and some humanoid slash Bigfoot alien type of thing, whatever monster comes crawling through it like it's a tunnel, right? Falls out the end of it. And the tunnel away. closes and it gets up and runs off. Right. Like if that's true, what the hell is that? Like, <laughs> is that why people aren't finding these things? Because these things do just like pop out <laughs> into our world. And they're, are they here on vacation? You know, is this like, a, are we a zoo and they're just coming here to play and then they go back to where they came from? You know, yeah, are right. we the goldfish? And and, yeah. and, they, and they, you know. That's them popping in to play with the fish and then get back out. I don't know. I don't know how you explain any of that, but it it the more we see on on the show, the more I wonder. You know, because I'm I'm a very skeptical person, and I definitely do not believe all of the Sherman's claims because a lot of them they were the only witnesses, and I get a little sketchy about single witness events like that, especially because most of the craziest things happened to only terry you know and but if he talked about this giant wolf that they found and now many years later they just <laughs> you or you hear chris bartell's story of a big wolf then we find a freaking dire wolf carcass that you can dna test that just that makes you start to think like okay maybe this story is true and if that's true I mean, those other absolutely absurdly nutballs stories are also true. And because I mentioned this in the insiders in the on the new website several weeks ago, but I'm from a town that's just on the other side of the Utah, Colorado, you know, state line right there. I mean, like 50 miles east of or yeah, east of the ranch. And on my hometown's Facebook page, someone posted a picture of this gigantic canine footprint that was found a, a, a little south of where my house is, where my family still lives. It's enormous. And wow. that was right after the dire wolf episode. Someone posted that and people were talking about what in the world is that thing? And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, is there, is there really maybe a family of dire wolves still living in that area or, or what? Cause this thing was enormous. And, you know, we didn't think it was a wolf. So, <laughs> and it's, it's only about 50 miles from the ranch. Mm -hmm. And you combine that with the, you know, the, the howling sound that they played for us at the, at Phenomicon last year, you know, that, that kind of howl that freaked, yeah. that freaked me out. That made the hair on my neck stand yeah. up. Like it does to me just thinking about it, but combine all of that data together and it starts to form a picture, right? You know, I, I don't know what to make of it, but it, it's, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I I think that's kind of the, the overall kind of overarching theme as it 
pertains to Skinwalker Ranch is that maybe one of the things about Skinwalker Ranch is it shows us a world where things are possible that we didn't think were possible. It shows us the way things may have been at one time or that currently are, that we just, for whatever reason, through our own ignorance, our own arrogance, our own distractions that we have with life and modern technology that we just don't notice these things as often that may be right under our nose that we just haven't taken the time or made the effort to to see and to to notice and um the the whole potential dire wolf thing is very fascinating to me and like you said john the the nature of phenomena of a supernatural or paranormal manner tend to be very isolated incidents. In other words, a lot of these things only happen with the actual person who's experiencing them. You know, such it was with me and my, my shadow being encounter that I had. So it is with people that, that encounter such things as shadow beings and people that, you know, see Scott Sasquatch out in the wilderness or, that have seen the Loch Ness Monster, a lot of times it's just one witness, one eyewitness, one experiencer. And just by very nature, it's difficult to falsify or verify what these people are relating with their experience. And where that changes is when, A, when you have more than one eyewitness or person experiencing the same exact thing at the same time, and B, when there is some kind of physical quantifiable evidence to accompany the experience and or the sighting. And that's what makes this particular chapter with the dire wolf uh, on the secret of Skinwalker Ranch so compelling is that we don't know, is it going to actually end up being this extinct animal or is it going to be some undocumented descendant species of a creature similar to a dire wolf or is it something that we're just simply not prepared to accept which is that maybe this got into our world by way of one of these alleged portals that allegedly exist on the ranch and that open from time to time where it just came from its point in time, however far long ago that may have been. And now all of a sudden it finds itself in 2024 where the atmospheric and environmental conditions are going to be very different from what it was exposed to, presumably, you know, 10,000, 15,000 years ago, right? So it's just another layer of the mystery of Skinwalker Ranch that just... How can you not be drawn in by it, right? I mean, the right. fact that we're here talking about this, I mean, I I just thought that that's all that it was, that this was just a really interesting ghost story about the dire wolf and the Shermans and uh, all that kind of thing. And yeah, as Travis and Eric have both said, I mean, Eric said, you know, he has no no system in place to account for the possibility of an extinct species being on Skinwalker Ranch. This is something that he was just simply, no, not even going to listen to that. But all of a sudden, there it is, Eric. It's now staring you in the face, you know, the evidence of it. And Travis, how many times this season have we heard him say at the, uh, as he's wrapping up the individual episodes that we now have to reconsider some of these more extraordinary stories that have come out of Skinwalker Ranch in the past of these encounters with cryptids, these encounters with orbs, these encounters with, you know, objects coming into and out of the Mesa. Um, but yet that's where we are. And that's mm -hmm. how I want to wrap things up with this, this conversation tonight is I'm absolutely excited and fascinated at where this docu-series, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, has brought us to this point. And as we said earlier, we are only at the halfway point 
of season five and look at everything that has happened already. So on that note, Roger, what do you think and what are, what perhaps are you most excited to see unfold? What would you like to maybe see more of as the remaining episodes of this season begin to air? I think, you know, hands down, I'll just keep it simple and short, but hands down, just more tests and really trying to repeat some of that evidence right around the triangle and understanding the time dilation there and what the heck is happening followed up by will they be able to get into the Mesa and where does that lead and how does it connect? Right on. John, how about you? What are you looking forward to the most and where would you like to see the investigation go from here? Like for probably what, at least a third time tonight, ditto to what Roger just said. <laughs> He's that, that, exactly the same. Um, I want to see them. I, I think they're getting to the point, I mentioned this before, that there's they're starting to get some repeatable results, or at least they know how to generate some sort of results. You know, they, they know LIDAR, GPR, those sorts of things are getting them data. Uh, any sort, Anything that's... Uh, any sort of time-based test seems to get generate some data. So I want to see more. I would like to see more specifically time-based tests, whether it's um, launching a miniature atomic clock, you know, up in a drone and flying it around for a while and bringing it back and seeing if it matches another atomic clock, you know, start them out synchronized and then see if they, if it's still synchronized when it comes back or, you know, things like that. I would love to see more, stuff like that but again just continue the, the those sorts of tests but the drilling stuff is interesting too but i'm frustrated as hell that none of it ever seems to go anywhere they just keep running into things and machines break down and you know the bit's broken or the 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 the, the rods are broken or you know i don't know what is going on with that that drives me nuts like a dog on it i just I'm I'm ready to just bring in some mining equipment, you know, some and just start strip mining the ranch and just start digging down until you get to whatever's there. John, you know? we are not going to dynamite the mesa. I, no, not dynamite. <laughs> Controlled strip mining. <laughs> right. But no, that yeah. <laughs> essentially, everything Roger said. Yeah. Yeah, I I think. Uh... As far as the drilling goes, I I really hope that they achieve some success. I something tells me it's gonna it's gonna be a while if they make any progress, uh, if, if any is to be made, because I think there's a I think there's a force working against them for whatever reason to prevent them from getting in there. Hopefully, I'm proven wrong because. <clears throat> Like everybody, I would love to find out and get a better look at what really is inside that Mesa. Uh, and the simple fact is we know that there is something of significant size deep inside that Mesa from the ground penetrating radar results that we got from Jan Franke and from uh, the Juniper imaging team, you know, several seasons ago. Lunasond. I would love to see Lunasond come back to the ranch and do another underground survey of sorts to get maybe better definition, better clarification of some of those alleged tunnels and or passageways that are underneath the ranch property that in some cases appear that they may be leading into the Mesa or out from the Mesa. So I would love I would love to see that. Uh, we know at least from the previews that have been shown that there's we 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 have uh, we we get to look forward to that next massive drone experiment where presumably those drones are falling from the sky. Uh, I'm really kind of curious and and a little bit a little bit of anxiety to see how that unfolds because I would imagine that had to be absolutely terrifying for the team to be on the ground and have you know, those, those drones, presumably I would say from sky elements, uh, falling from the sky. Right. I feel bad for that. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Plus that, I mean, that is so much damage to equipment. I mean, that's a huge loss of money right there. That's just, it yeah, it really, it really is. And, 
and then of course we're we're still waiting to see what that mysterious jelly like substance that uh dragon shows to the camera and some of the previews and you know my my little joke about that of it being green street's diaphragm that they dug out of the mesa <laughs> <laughs> but we won't talk about that folks Shh. Oh, oh jim jim let me add one more thing that we haven't talked about that i this actually makes me like i want to see more experiments on this and we haven't talked about it but the electricity the current that's being generated underground that they're picking up because if there are tunnels and things that we are led to believe in the mesa underneath the skinwalker ranch property is this something that's naturally occurring and is this like are there other areas that they can compare it to or where is this type of energy coming from and i know that previous seasons they did the whole um tesla coil right and were able to power all of that through the ground so the the, the ground is highly conductive and i would love to find out more about why that is and how they can get to the mystery of why it's so conductive and what's generating that electricity excellent point i would love to see i'd love to see more tesla coil experiments as well and I would love to see Pete Kelsey out there more on the ranch to uh, uh, conduct some more imaging surveys. Um, Cause I think that, that Pete plays an essential role in, in capturing that data. And uh, you know, we've, we've, we, John, you and I have had a chance to meet Pete and know what an awesome guy he is. I mean, he's, he's a literal rock star in every sense of the word. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that we get to see more of him. Hoping we'll get to see more of uh, Jay Stratton coming back to the ranch and who knows what other uh, leading experts that might be coming back onto the ranch. We know, again, from one of the previews that uh, former uh, County Sheriff Deputy Chris Porritt, uh, we're still waiting for him to make an appearance this season. The last time we saw Chris Porritt, I believe, was season one, wasn't it, Roger? Season one or season two. And, uh, of course, he he knew the both the Myers family and the Sherman family uh, way back in the day. So all kinds of exciting stuff to look forward to guys just on uh, to close up and some final closing thoughts and remarks. Uh, John, we'll start with you. What, uh, what are, what's your final say on where we've come to this point mid season of season five of the secret of Skinwalker ranch. I'm just, I'm going to be contacting my doctor to do some pre-medication so I can handle the rest of this season. Because <laughs> I, I have a suspicion yeah. it's going to be pretty darn crazy. And it's going to be crazier than what we've already seen. And that is absolutely fantastic. And I am here and ready for the ontological shock. My man, sounds good. Roger, how about you? Closing thoughts and remarks from you. I think John uh, summed it up perfectly. I think the... Uh, with everything that we've seen, I still think that the best is yet to come and super excited. So I've got the uh, seatbelt on and uh, I'm ready to go. I have to agree, folks. I'm just super excited uh, for what lies in store for the remaining episodes. I can't wait to see things unfold from this point. I can't wait to see where the investigation takes us next. I can't wait to see where the data leads us to in the uh, the upcoming episodes. And of course, looking back at how far we've come, I mean, go back to that very first episode of the docu-series back in 2020 when it first aired and we're introduced to Dr. Travis Taylor and he's just got this, this attitude of like, right, the ranch responds. Uh-huh, okay, guys, have fun storming the castle. Um, and so just... Just to watch the evolution of each member of the team since that very first season um, has just been so wonderful to watch play out in front of us. And I am so grateful and so thankful to be able to be a spectator in watching all of this unfold, because I believe that what is going on at Skinwalker Ranch, the research and investigations being done out there truly is the frontier of science and has the potential to change the way that we think, the way that we view 
our world and the reality and the universe around us. And to me, that is so exciting. And I'm so grateful that I get to enjoy this with all of you, you know, with both of you guys and with all of the Skinwalker Ranch insiders and with everybody that is a an avid watcher of the docuseries, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. It is uh, truly one of the most compelling shows I've ever I've ever watched and I'm fully invested in this process this investigation I'm just honored to be a part of the Skinwalker Ranch community and uh, to count myself among the many wonderful people that are a part of that community grateful to be connected with both of you uh, John and, and Roger and thank you to you in particular John for coming back into the soul of the unexplained for your fourth time and uh, we, we should give you a, a plaque of some kind because <laughs> you you've now appeared, I think, on the show more than more than May has. So you uh, oh, wow. we're going to have to give you the title of honorary co-host. <laughs> I appreciate you. Baby. It's a blast. I, I have a blast listening to you guys. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our new subscribers and Got to give a shout out to uh, our very dear friend, Jeff Freeman, over at the J Free 906 podcast. Folks, remember that uh, Jeff Freeman does an absolutely brilliant weekly recap of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch every Wednesday. And you can find that on his YouTube channel, J Free 906, right here on YouTube. So if you haven't already, subscribe to Jeff's channel and check it out because he is the gold standard of podcasting when it comes to Skinwalker Ranch and Curse of Oak Island and uh, all kinds of cool stuff. And Roger and I, don't forget, folks, we'll be doing a special two-for-one podcast uh, this next week for Beyond Skinwalker Ranch. Just uh, the schedules that Roger and I had this past week uh, with my my band's big live performance last Friday and uh just uh, life gets in the way sometimes, and we didn't get a chance to do um, our, our weekly recap of Beyond Skinwalker Ranch, which I have to say, the most recent episode of Beyond Skinwalker Ranch, Roger, did a little bit to redeem Andy Bustamante for me. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was refreshing to see them taking a more uh, a more sensible approach and uh, toning down some of the uh, theatrics and, and drama and. We'll get to more of that in our upcoming recap of both episode three and the upcoming season uh, episode four of Beyond Skinwalker Ranch that will be airing this week. And we'll we'll get that out to you uh, this Friday. And folks, we're going to see if Jeff Freeman himself can join us for that recap. So stay tuned for that. But folks, if you like what you saw today and uh, if you have any comments for us, please join us in this conversation in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please uh, hit that subscribe button down there to be notified every time Roger and I post new content to the soul of the unexplained. As always, thank you for joining Roger and I. We will see you soon. We'll see you for both a Skinwalker, Secret of Skinwalker Ranch recap this week, as well as the uh, two-for-one recap of Beyond Skinwalker Ranch. And so much more exciting stuff is going to be coming your way from the soul of the unexplained. So just stay tuned for that. So with that, folks, just uh, as always, love one another, take care of one another, be nice to bunnies because, well, I like bunnies. Eat some tacos and uh, just be well, be awesome, and uh, we will see you very soon, folks. And uh, so, yeah, just be awesome, folks. See ya.